and sorrow that I really want to bring up is a bit different than sadness or grief. And I'll just call it existential sorrow. A sorrow that uh, is viewed from a larger view, from a larger perspective. And generally, our sadnesses, our griefs, our common day-to-day -day sorrows, which we all have, are very personal in nature, right? Something happens to us, some kind of loss. We lose a job, we lose a partner. We lose something that we care for. And there's sorrow, there's grief, there's sadness. But a lot of the times the sorrow uh, gets limited or is limited because of the place from which we are seeing it or viewing it. We generally experience these sadnesses, these griefs, from a personal perspective, from, a, from me, how it affects me, how this loss impacts me. And that definitely has its place. And it's important to have those sadnesses and griefs and to mourn our losses. But this larger existential sorrow is a welcoming to see that our day-to-day -day sorrows aren't unique to us. That our day-to-day -day sorrows connect us to each other. Sometimes you'll notice in deep moments of loss, like death or losing loved ones, is that there's moments in that grief, in that sorrow, almost like a, a different view comes in. It says, yes, of course, you're grieving the loss of this human being that you love so much. And this is our human condition. This connects you to everyone. This is what we all go through. Because we generally aren't conscious of that, we just continue to kind of hold on to the personal aspect of it. And we don't see that there's a possibility for something larger to open. That in a way, by holding it and seeing it only from the view of the personal, we limit the amount of care and love we can express towards what we love. You know, and that's another really good way to look at sorrow. It's, it's so connected to love. If we didn't care, there would be no sorrow. If our hearts didn't deeply, deeply care, what would be the use of sorrow? Would sorrow make any sense? So sorrow is an expression of care. It pulls us in, deeply in, into our hearts, into that place where we care so much and it pulls us in closer into that which we love, that human being, that expression, that form, And so it's, it's pulling us closer and closer 
ever more intimately with that which we love. And so I am being daring by saying, let it. Let it pull you. Let it break your heart open. Let life break your heart open. It's actually God entering your heart. When a seed breaks open to root and sprout, it weeps. When the heart breaks open to grow and become more of itself, it weeps. Weeping is how the flesh wakes up. You know, many of us that um, have been around non-duality and spirituality and really interested in consciousness, we've touched upon these places where we feel unfazed, empty. And the experience generally has a almost like we fall back into presence. We fall back into the divine ground which we are. And in that, there is tremendous peace. Everything is soothed, calmed, and stilled. And somehow, as if the personal element, the human element, doesn't come into the picture as strongly. Almost like the human element recedes. We're not as connected to our sorrows, you could say. And that's one way, or that's one aspect, that's one pathway, you could say, to God or to the divine. But I find that to actually live that in our day-to-day -day lives, we have to include the forward movement also. So not just the back into our true nature, back into awareness, back into the ground, but in, in, into our bodies, into our flesh, into our humanity, into the content of our lives. And that's another way that we hear it spoken about you know, focus on context rather than content, right? Be the context, not the content. The content rises and falls. It changes, so you can't hold on to it. Let it go. That's generally the sense. That's generally the instruction. And there's usefulness in that. That's really important to allow the content, to allow what arises, especially when it comes to thoughts, ideas, beliefs, emotions. They arise and then they dissolve. They all come and then they go. No need to hold on to them. But there's also another way. Meet the content all the way in. Zoom into anything your eyes and your heart choose to behold and get ever closer to it. And this is what I meant when I said in the meditation that there's infinite capacity to get close to something that we can actually get infinitely close to our finite nature, to our humanity, to the content of our experience. 
And when we do so, we recognize, wait a minute, if, if there's no limit to how close I can become or get to anything, right there is our infinite nature revealed. Right there, God is revealed. And so to cut ourselves off from these sorrows is to cut off the possibility of intimacy, profound intimacy and profound inclusion. Right, so this is another thing we do. We say, okay, we're, we want we want love and only love, but not the sorrow. So then we get an image of what love is. We put it in a box. There's an ideal of what love is. There's a belief of what love is. There's even a felt sense of what love is, of what we felt it as in the past. And then we go, we want that. Let me, let me hold on to this. Let me stay here. And so sorrows may arise or things may arise that don't fit this image. And we want to say, no, not this, not this, not this. But when we allow the recognition of this, of our day-to-day -day sorrows, but even more importantly, of this larger sorrow which connects all of existence, And there's an inclusion. Then there's love. Then there's sorrow. And then there's actually something that's even larger than either of them. In the way that I, I'm thinking about this, it's actually a, an unconditional love begins to reveal itself in our experience. And I'm really, I don't want this to be like conceptual, you know? I'm really saying that it's in the experience of sorrow where naturally you will find for yourselves, I'm certain at some point, because we all have had sorrows and we all will have them. But when they open up, see if you can't notice how it connects you to everything. And let it continue to break your heart open. Lean into it. all the way in. Because I'm seeing sorrow not as some kind of only, you know, that humans go through. It's something in life. Like animals actually grieve each other, grieve loss. When the caterpillar goes into its cocoon, it has to break down entirely for something new to emerge, for the butterfly to emerge. And life is full of these examples. And so I'm saying by allowing this larger sorrow that connects us to life, to each other and to life, we're actually welcoming in love. So 
just like the sorrow is coming out of care in the heart, like the heart cares so much that, that it expresses its sorrow, that upwelling, the tears, right? The same way that when we view sorrow from this larger perspective, and we see how it connects us to all of life, all of existence. It connects us to the whole. When we do so, we're also connecting ourselves to this incredibly large love. That's actually wanting to come in right into that spot where it hurts the most, where we feel that loss. And it wants to wash it, and it wants to love it, and it wants to sing to it, and rinse it, and it just wants to love it up. So don't cut off sorrow. Don't cut off sorrow for being spiritual or awake. No need for that. Let yourself be human. Life is not about not being affected. Life is not about not being impressionable. You are naturally impressionable. Let life cut deeper. Let the sorrows actually cut all the way deep. Because if they do, and as they do, it's inevitable that it will reveal to you your own nature. Why? Because you are what you are. Why? Because you are a part of the whole. You are one with the whole. And so in this way, our, our finite nature, our humanity, by going deeply in, all the way in, actually shows us our divine nature. You could say there's a non-duality inside duality. There's a fleshy kind of non-duality that doesn't reject anything. It's wild, it's mad, it's a dancer. It says yes to everything. We don't need to wait. We actually don't need to wait till we're at somebody's deathbed or our own to let the sorrow cut us deeper and reveal this unconditional love.